Hello friends, wherever you are. Today I want to teach you something about trigonometry and I want us to talk about the trigonometric equations. This is going to be our fifth lesson in trigonometry and it is really very important to learn something in solving trigonometric equations and the, the trick is really very simple. Most of the trigonometric equations have infinitely many roots. But when you are given an equation to solve a trigonometric equation, then they will specify for you the range of values in which you have to find a solution, unless it is talking about a general solution. So, what is a trigonometric equation? It's like any equation you are going to solve, but with it you have to get angle that satisfies a given equation. Let's see. So, trigonometric equation is trigonometric equation is have infinitely many solutions okay let's take an example if we look at this equation uh, cosine of theta equals to zero okay so that's an equation and the, here basically to find the value of theta then we take the cos inverse of zero and we are looking for angles whose cosine is zero and those are the zeros of the cosine so if you check the cosine curve let's see look at this curve i will sketch it here for the values may be from minus 2 pi to positive 2 pi so if this is a pi which is 90 degrees this is a pi out of 2 then we have pi okay then we have 3 pi out of 2 okay 3 pi divided by 2 and then pi 2 pi okay so that is a this is 4 pi out of 2 pi over 2 plus, okay, which is, uh, yeah, that's, that's okay. Pi, 3 pi out of 2 is 270 degrees. So this is the same thing as the pi over 2. Then this is a pi. Then this is a 3 pi. Or the spacing may not be even on both sides, but it's okay. As long as you understand what I'm talking about. This is 3 pi divided by 2. And then here we have 2 pi, okay, 2 pi. Now, we know that the cosine curve is having maximum value 1. Y is equal to cosine theta. So this has maximum value 1 and the minimum value negative 1. So this is a negative 1. So the cosine of 0 <coughs> is 1. And the cosine of pi is 0. So, for pi, for pi, pi but the cosine of pi is and the cosine of pi is negative one. Then this goes to zero, and then you go back to one. Okay, it oscillates like that on both sides. The same happens here. Okay, this is negative one. Then this is zero. Then here it goes back to. So if you are to sketch this curve, okay, here it goes back to okay that value so if we sketch the, the 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 cosine curve here we're gonna have something like this this is a sketch it's not so exact like the one you draw on a computer i can also use this up and the plot one which is so accurate but it will take me out of time so let me just do the one i can sketch with my hands okay so we have this as the cosine curve now for the graph this y is equal to cosine of theta Okay, the zeros of, of, of cosine are those angles where cosine is equal to zero. And if you look at the roots of this equation, then you're going to have a root here. Let me change the color and try to use a color that will be, I don't know whether this will work out, but let me use the red color. Okay, so this is the one value. Okay, cosine of theta equals to zero. This is another value here. Cosine of theta is equal to zero. Okay, we have the same story here. Cosine of theta equals to zero. But you know, the cosine curve, it keeps going, okay, depending on the angles we are considering. Here, I have only considered the angles from 
negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees okay but if you plot this for so many angles it continues infinitely so we have so many angles whose cosine is equal to zero okay now in this case we shall see that theta equals to cos inverse of zero uh, equals we have seen that uh, positive or negative okay 90 degrees which you're writing as pi over 2 then we have uh, positive or negative 3 pi out of 2 positive or negative and then you keep going okay you got 450 and uh, yeah so those are the roots of this equation okay now when they give us a trigonometric equation okay what we need basically to solve the equation is the knowledge of quadrants because in most equations, is unless there are general solutions but most solutions that they will demand from you will be will be give will be demanded in a specified range of angles okay they will give you maybe zero to 360 okay if in radians then it will be in terms of pi let's see this equation so the equation is solve solve for x in the equation two sine of x minus one equals to zero okay that is a simple equation which we can solve with the just knowledge of quadrants and the ratios okay how ratios behave in the different quadrants so look at this question so well okay let me let this be our example one we want to solve two okay one to solve two sine of x minus one equals to zero okay if we make sine x the subject sine x is equal to a half now this is the most important stage when you're solving a trigonometric equation the first step to look at nature of the ratio nature of ratio by nature of ratio i mean is it a positive or a negative ratio now this is a positive ratio a half is a positive ratio okay and it is a ratio for sine okay the next question will be about the quadrants the knowledge of quadrants this is a positive ratio yes it is a sine ratio it is a positive so in which quadrant is sine positive sine is a positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant so okay let me specify here let's say for zero degrees less or equal to theta less or equal to 360 degrees let's just look at the solution between zero and 360 degrees okay so sine x is equal to a half it is a positive ratio what we do we go ahead and write x as the sine inverse okay of a half for positive it is easy you just go directly but for negative i will give you a trick okay sine inverse of a half we have seen in lesson four that the, the sine inverse which is the sine inverse if the sign if sine is equal to a half then the angle is 30 degrees we saw that in the common ratios okay the angle 30 is the one with the sine equal to a half so this is equal to 30 degrees okay now if we after getting 30 degrees then we have to go to the quadrants you know we are looking at the first and the second quadrant go to the x-axis and draw a vector inclined at that angle 30 degrees that's first quadrant in the second quadrant it is going to be the same story 30 degrees to the x-axis don't mind whether it is the positive or negative side of the x-axis but the inclination should always be the x-axis these are positive angles we are going anti-clockwise so this angle is going to be 150 degrees and then this angle here is 30 degrees so x is equal to sine inverse of a half the angles we want are 30 degrees and then 150 degrees okay those are the angles in the range 0 to 360 and we are done next let's solve okay of the equation uh, the equation is tan squared of theta is equal to a third okay for the range negative 180 degrees less or equal to theta less or equal to 180 degrees positive 
okay this is a very interesting equation for beginners tan squared of theta is a third okay so solution very simple solution but you have to listen if you're gonna learn something here i'm telling you equation is tease so many students and the moment you learn how to solve the equation is then trigonometry will be coming to your fingertips okay let's see tan squared theta okay means that it, it okay this is the way we write tan squared theta this tan theta then in a bracket squared this here is a short way of writing tan squared but this is how it's supposed to be even when you are feeding it in a calculator okay and this is a third you know writing it the way it is written here is just a way of avoiding brackets okay so it is a short way but in reality it should be in parentheses okay you know these are parentheses so you can call them brackets but the right word to use for this these are parentheses okay so tan squared is in parentheses okay so what do we do let's see okay now we have been given the equation tan squared is equal this is something as writing x squared is equal to a third then how do we find x you take the square root on both sides okay so let me go ahead and take away the x and then go ahead and take the roots root of tan squared theta it is the same thing as the root of one out of three but we know the square root of a number is either positive or negative so we call this a radical okay the square root is gonna be a positive or negative one out of root three okay the square root of one is one so we on, we, we we capitalize on the down part of the denominator okay now we have this side is tan theta is either positive or negative one out of root three okay if you take the negative root if you say tan theta is equal to negative one out of root of three okay then the ratio on this other side this right hand side okay is a negative ratio okay the first part when you are solving trigonometric equations is to analyze the nature of the ratio this is a negative ratio so if it is a negative ratio then we can only go to quadrants where tangent is negative to find the solution okay and the solution is really very simple for a negative case look what the tan inverse of a positive one over root three okay i'm very sure if you check the common ratios this angle three is going to be 30 degrees because this was discussed in lesson four okay where we talked about common ratios we said the tan of 60 is root of 3 the tangent of 30 is 1 out of root 3 so this is the inclination to the x axis then we have to go in the quadrants and they have that inclination to the x axis okay we are saying uh, we are going to a quadrant where tangent is negative second and the fourth quadrant then you have the inclination of 30 degrees okay so this is uh, we have an angle here 30 degrees and then in the fourth quadrant we have an angle to the x-axis you know this gives you the inclination remember we are dealing with a negative ratio here but this part is going to give us this inclination here which is 30 degrees now if the inclination is 30 degrees then in our solution we are interested in the angles that are between negative 180 degrees and the positive 180 degrees so let's begin with the positives the first positive angle here okay theta is equal to 150 degrees okay then the second positive angle here is theta is 330 degrees okay then for the negative case theta equals to negative you measure from the x-axis the positive x-axis in a clockwise direction i have a negative 30 degrees then i have this other angle okay which is 180 plus 30 and that's a negative 210 degrees okay so I, I will pick the angles that lie in range in this in this first solution you can see the angles that are between negative 180 and the positive 180 i have only two angles minus 30 degrees and the 
150 degrees okay this is dropped because it's out of range and this is also dropped because it's out of range okay so we have those two but writing a solution right presenting the final the final solution we write in the curry brackets so at this stage i don't want to use the curry brackets so let me just say that i have selected two angles from here i have minus 30 degrees and then 150 degrees and that was the solution for this other part which is a negative the same is done of here i have minus 30 and positive side where we have tan of theta is equal to one out of root of three positive and the theta is the tan inverse of one out of root of three okay which is 30 degrees this gives us the inclination now in this case we are looking at the quadrants where tangent is positive okay so how many quadrants do we have here we have two quadrants the first quadrant okay all ratios are positive here so i put 30 degrees okay this gives me the inclination okay then the second quadrant sign okay we got the third quadrant we have 30 degrees to the x-axis so we measure the positive angles first okay positive angles 30 degrees and 210 degrees then we got the negative angles negative angles i measure this okay that is a, a negative 150 degrees then i also measure this negative to that vector line and that is a minus 330 degrees so my angles theta now i'm going to write the solution okay let me bring minus 150 so minus 30 i think minus 150 is the, the one which is most negative minus 150 degrees go to minus 30 degrees okay after 30 you go to 150 degrees positive okay and then oh there is 30 degrees positive and 150 degrees positive okay so we have 30 degrees positive and 150 degrees positive okay another way of presenting this solution is to just write a positive or negative 30 degrees positive or negative 150 degrees and we are done so if you are to solve a trigonometric equation first analyze the nature of the ratio positive or negative if it is positive go where that ratio go in the quadrants where that ratio is positive it, if it is negative go in the quadrants where the ratio is negative okay next is to get the inclination getting the inclination is where so many students have trouble and because of that let me do one one example i'm gonna do so many examples here we are going to solve so many trigonometric equations because you have to learn and that's why i'm doing this online lecture okay let's see solve the equation okay i'm beginning with simple equations but we are going to solve so many equations which one should i give you i should give you one which is really simple and you know for a beginner like you or for somebody who is just enthusiastic and want to know about trigonometry okay this is not a big deal let's be, do something with the common ratio okay two cosine of 3x minus one equals to zero degrees okay two cosine equals to zero just not zero degrees four zero degrees less or equal to theta less or equal to 360 degrees so we want positive angles so in your solution okay you're gonna write two cosine of 3x minus one equal to zero so the next step is just write cosine of 3x is equal to a half now this is a positive ratio okay a half is a positive ratio what i'm writing over here which is a half is a positive ratio this is a positive ratio so if it is a positive ratio then we have to go to quadrants okay where we have that ratio positive cosine is a positive in the first and the fourth quadrant now if that is the case you know for positive it is, it is easy the next step where i write cosine okay oh i take the cos inverse on both sides so i will have 3x is the cos inverse of a half which is 
if you really know your common ratios or if you use a calculator, there's nobody who is stopping you from using a calculator. That angle is 60 degrees, okay? So what I need is to go to the quadrants where cosine is positive and I have an inclination of 60 degrees to the x-axis. First is this quadrant here, 60 degrees. Next is this other quadrant. I have 60 degrees to the x-axis. So I look at the positive angles because in the range, we don't have negatives. So we only have positive angles. So let's look at it. The angles between Z and C60. Measure now the angles, the positive direction. You're going to move from here, reach that line. That is 60 degrees. Okay, this is three theta rather. Oh, the angle given is 3x. I'm, used to, I'm so much used to theta. I end up writing, but this is 3x. Okay, is equal to 60 degrees. Then we have this, which is 360 minus 60. That is 300 degrees. Now, here there is a trick. We're going to divide by 3 to get the value of x. So what we do, if I divided only these two angles, I will have 20 and 100. But there will be more angles I will leave out. So when you look at this as 3, then you move 3 revolutions. The coefficient, the number of, of times you move, uh, you, you move to the vector, because look at trigonometry. If I have an angle which is 30 degrees, and I go a revolution which is 360, and I add on the angle 30, those two angles will have the same ratio. So if I moved from the x-axis here, and then I go and come back to that line, which is the vector, okay? That angle is 360 plus 60, okay? Which is 420 degrees, okay? It will have exactly the same ratio as 60 because they are in the same position. We said they are coterminal, okay? So we move here a revolution, which is 360, okay? And the add on 300. So 360 plus 300 is 60, okay? 60, 60 degrees. Okay. Next, if you divided by 3, 60, 60 will give you 200 something. So it is a good idea to go another revolution, okay? 720, which is 360 move. What I'm saying is this 360, then another 360, and I add on a 60. Okay, so 720 plus 60 is 780 degrees. Okay, then if I moved here 360, 720 plus 300 is 1060 degrees. So let me see if I divide by 3. Okay, I have 60 divided by 3. Divide each of these angles by 3 and we see what we get. Okay, next page, 1060, but if you get 720 and add on 300, you are going to get 1020 degrees. Okay, so that's what this angle here, which is 300, we have 3x equal to 60 degrees, equal to 300 degrees, 300 degrees, equal to... Uh, 420 degrees equal to 630 degrees equal to 780 degrees equal to 1060 degrees that is 720 plus 1020 degrees not 60 i think here you are dealing with so far there are so many angles okay but i can even move 10 revolution and keep adding on these angles so here x is gonna be 60 divided by 3, you get your 20, okay? 330 divided by 3 is... Oh, did I omit one angle, which is 300 degrees? I think I left out two. Okay? I think this is not 330, but it's supposed to be 300 degrees. 300 degrees, okay? This is 100, because I'm dividing by 3, okay? Then we have 420 divide by three so you can divide and fill in okay if you have done your division then you should be having these angles so in the range zero to three sixty okay we are we are uh, we, we have solved the equation two okay cosine of three x minus one equal to zero okay therefore x equals to those angles 20 degrees 100 degrees 140 degrees 210 degrees okay 
260 degrees, then 340 degrees. Okay, that is the solution for that equation. Okay, this lesson is getting lengthy, but I don't want to make it lengthy because you are doing it online and you do mostly listening. I had tried to to okay do the Zoom meeting, but the because of the different time zones we live in, I tried so many times. No, none none of you was trying to log in, so I have uh, given it a second thought. Okay. For now, because I'm a bit busy grading exams for students who are doing a summer uh, semester, I may not do the Zoom meeting for you, but I have all the resources to do an online class. So you look at this and you see if you learn something out of it. I'm going to solve more trigonometric equations. As a student who is interested in learning, I would want you to try out some of the numbers I have here. And these are really simple numbers. I want you to try out uh, the numbers I have here. Let me just give you one. You can give me a feedback. You can write a comment, you know, on my YouTube channel. Okay. I want you to solve. Tan of 3 theta minus 45 degrees equals to a half for... 0 degrees, less or equal to theta, less or equal to 360 degrees. Okay? Try it out. As a student who is learning, you know, the best way to learn... Okay, let me turn on my video here so I can speak something to you. So, mathematics is interesting, but it will be interesting to you if you put in your time, you dedicate your time, and the interest is there to learn mathematics because things will appear challenging to you when you don't know. Now, when you start on the process of learning and you get to know, everything will come simple to you. So, I urge you to invest in more of personal time. You know, this is a very challenging time. You are in a lockdown. You can't meet your teacher because of the pandemic going on and so many people are dying. I, every day I get uh, sad news coming to me. I wake up and find something in the inbox and the WhatsApp messages and, the, you know, from the, all those groups, people are dying. And for sure, we all need the life because without life, we cannot study mathematics, we cannot do anything. So you must adhere to the standard operating procedures, streamlined or stipulated by the Minister of Education and Sports. Okay, if you are going to the public, please put on a mask. It is important. It is your life anyway. But... Still, in these challenging times, in these challenging times, students must adjust to the new environment, okay? You have to learn to teach yourself, okay? <laughs> Learning to, to, to do things on by your own is really important. Read books, get these online resources. We are here to help you. Because we're not paid, we're not so much committed, you know. You may want these lessons every day, but, you know, when I have a deal coming in, and here is a free class I am doing online just for charity. I would first go for the deal. That's why you don't always get uh, constant updates. But it is important for you to dedicate your time and read books. You know, in this world, you must have too much personal investment. Okay? Invest your time in learning and the results will be good. Okay? Yeah. So this is what I want to tell you. Okay? Dedicate your time to learning. Yeah, get some of the books like a backhouse because I'm basically using backhouse. Then I'll use Tranta. That's the next book I really enjoy using trigonometry and the other books. There you have so many resources, but for for now I'll stick those two books. Backhouse, then Tranta will be coming in. Okay, because I want to teach you trigonometry. I want you to learn trigonometry. I really want you to excel in your studies, and that's why I'm coming in to help you, free of charge, unless you want to make a donation. You can go ahead and ask for mobile number, my mobile number or my account number and make a donation. I don't refuse donations, but this knowledge is free. You only need to invest in the data, okay? That is it. That's what you need. So uh, whenever I teach my students, I always give, you know, I give them a word at the end of it. So, you know, teaching not about coming, giving content and going away. As human beings, we interact, talk to each other and learn from each other. So, this is what I want to tell you. Uh, it is important you invest in your time, okay? Evaluate yourself, read the books, okay? Learn to be by yourself. You will succeed. Thank you. So, so mathematics, mathematics is interesting, is interesting but... but 
it will be interesting to you if you put in your time, you dedicate your time, and the interest is there to learn mathematics because things will appear challenging to you when you don't know. Now, when you start on the process of learning and you get to know, everything will become simple to you. So, I urge you to invest in more of personal time. You know, this is a very challenging time. You are in a lockdown. You can't, you can't meet, meet your teacher, teacher because, because of the of pandemic going, going on, on and, and so many people are dying. dying. I, every day I get uh, sad news, news coming. coming. To me, I, I wake, wake up, up and find, find something in the inbox, inbox, inbox and, and the, the WhatsApp, WhatsApp messages, messages and, and you know, from, from all those groups, groups people are dying. dying. And, and for sure, we all need the life because, because without, without life, life we, cannot we cannot study study mathematics, we cannot do anything. anything. So, so you, you must adhere to the standard operating procedures, procedures. streamline or stupidly by the Minister of Education and Sports. Okay? okay, if you are if going in the public, public please, please put on a mask. mask. It is important. It is your life. Your life. Anyway. But still, in these challenging times, in these challenging times, Students, students must, must adjust, adjust the new environment, environment okay? okay? You, you have, have to learn to teach, to teach yourself, yourself, okay? okay. <laughs> Learning to, 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 to do things, things on by your own, own is really, really important. important. Read, Read books. books. Get, Get these online, online resources. resources. We are here, we are to, here help to help you. you. Because we want to pay, pay you. are not so much committed, you know. You may want this lessons every day, but, you know, when I have a deal coming in, and here is a free class I am doing online just for charity, I would first go for the deal. That's why you don't always get... Uh, constant, constant updates, updates. But, but it is important, important for you, you to dedicate, to dedicate your, time your time and read books. books. You, know, you know, in this, in this world, world, you, you must, must have, have too, too much personal investment. investment. Okay? okay, invest, invest your time, time in learning, learning. and those also be good. good. Okay? okay, yeah. yeah. So, so this is so what this I want to tell you. Okay, okay? Dedicate, dedicate your time to learning. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get some of the some books like the Backhouse, House, because I'm basically I'm using Backhouse. House. Then, then I'll, I'll use Planter, that's, that's the next, next book I really, really enjoy using trigonometry, and, and the other books. books. They have so many resources, resources but, but for, for, for now, now I'll stick to those two books, Backhouse, then Planter will be coming in. Okay? Because I want to teach you trigonometry, I want to learn trigonometry, I really want you to excel in your studies, and that's why I'm coming to help you. Free, free of charge, of charge. Unless, unless you want, you want to, make to make a donation, donation you can go ahead, ahead and ask, ask for mobile, mobile number, number, mobile number, number or my account number, number and make a donation, donation. I don't refuse donation, donation is, but this knowledge is free. free. You only, only need to invest, invest in data, data. Okay? okay? That is it, that's, that's what you need. need. So, so uh, whenever I teach my students, I always give, you know, I give them a word at the end of it, so, you know, teaching not about coming, giving content and going away. As, As human, human beings, beings we interact, we talk, talk to each, each other, and learn from each other. other. So, so this is what I want to tell you. Uh, uh, it is important to invest in your time. time. Okay. okay. Evaluate okay. yourself. Read the books. books. Okay. okay. Learn, learn to be by yourself. yourself. You will succeed. succeed. Thank, Thank you. you.